Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is Monday, June the 22nd, and this is your daily word of encouragement. Um, I'm thrilled to be doing these again, and I uh, hope this is going to be a blessing for you as it, uh, it has been for me in the past, and hope that we can encourage each other as we join here together each and every day. Um, all the devotions this week are going to be focused on the theme of love. We're going through the sermon series on the fruit of the Spirit and talking about all these qualities that should be emerging in the life of someone who has given their given themselves to Jesus, who has received his gift of salvation and is being sanctified, being made more and more like Christ every day. And that only happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're talking about living the Spirit-fueled life, that is the Spirit uh, is, uh, abides within us, that it's not just filling us, but it's fueling us, giving us the, um, the power that we need um, as the Spirit continues to point us back towards Jesus. And so the first quality of, of that that fruit of the Spirit in our lives that we talked about yesterday was love. And uh, the name of the sermon was A Love That Never Fails. Um, and we were talking about the power that this love has because love is defined by God himself in the scriptures. It tells us that God is love. And so today I want to focus on a very specific um, way that we demonstrate uh, love to others. Um, we learned that love is selfless. We learned that love is sacrificial. It seeks the best interest of others, even above and beyond uh, our, our own selves. Uh, Jesus tells us that when we're going to love others, we should love our neighbors as ourselves. And one of the points that's really been hit home with me lately as I've thought about that particular command from Jesus is, um, I, I know myself pretty well. Uh, I know my history. I know my all my faults and flaws. I know my likes, my dislikes. I know the way that I tend to perceive the world and the people around me, even though I try to continue to bring that back to Christ. I know the, the, the ways that I can easily let that you know, be led astray. Uh, I know myself. I know myself probably better than anyone else, maybe other than Erica, and certainly not as well as God does, but I know myself really well. And it says, love your neighbor as yourself. It's going to be really hard for me to love my neighbor when I don't know and understand them very well. And I think that's uh, one of the, the, the lost aspects of how to love well that we can easily miss on is that I need to learn to understand someone. Um, part of loving them is learning to respond to not who I think they should be, but who they actually are. Uh, and loving them for, for who they are so because they're a creation of God. And wanting God's best for them, but not re withholding love or withholding respect or withholding honor uh, until they've achieved that. And so I was thinking about um, the current climate that we're in, really uh, that our nation has been in since uh, the killing of George Floyd back on Memorial Day and all the protests and, and other deaths that have, uh, happened before that and, and some that have even happened since that and that have spurred this, this debate in our country. And so much about it to me is uh, this anger and this frustration becomes because people get defensive immediately. It's, it's immediately I need to defend myself, which is understandable, defend myself against everything that you don't know and understand about me. And it seems to me that the only way to bridge those gaps and those divides is to do exactly that, is to build understanding. Um, one of my favorite books and one of my favorite uh, literary characters, uh, the book is To Kill a Mockingbird, and, and the character from that, that book that's always been kind of a hero to me is Atticus Finch. And when, um, when Atticus was trying to teach his children about how to avoid the pitfalls of racism. Um, he said to his daughter, Scout, he said, you know, you never really uh, understand a man until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it for a while. And I've been reflecting on that idea, that quote from the book, and certainly that idea of loving your neighbors yourself a lot over the last few weeks. And I thought, I don't I don't know what it's like to be an African American. I don't know what it's like to be a minority um, here in this nation and in my culture. I also don't know what it's like to serve in law enforcement. I don't know what it's like to be, I'm sure, trained to uh, use your past experiences and, and difficulties <clears throat> and conflicts that you've gone through as part of your decision-making process in every situation, which could be life or death, potentially, every time, uh, and trying to make your decisions. There's a lot that I don't understand about any of those situations, and there's a lot, certainly, that each of the sides of this argument and debate don't understand about one another. But it seems to me that if we're going to uh, learn to bridge these divides and uh, work towards um, resolution, that it can only happen when we learn to love our neighbors ourselves, and we learn to, instead of being quick to speak, learning how to listen. And it says that and reminds us of that in the Scriptures. In James chapter 2, um, as the uh, 
the apostle uh, James wrote to the early church, this group of uh, believers that was learning what it meant to follow after Jesus Christ, uh, he wrote these words to them. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And how easily and quickly we get those words mixed up. Instead of being uh, quick to listen, we are often slow or reluctant or unwilling to listen. Instead of being slow to speak, man, we are immediate to speak. We feel like we've got to get out our opinion first. And the real act of love is when we set aside our agenda and our wants and our needs momentarily so that we demonstrate to the other person you have worth and you have value to me. This is the idea of empathy. Empathy is not, I, 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 I can feel what you're feeling because I've gone through it myself. That's, that's sympathy. It's what we express to each other when someone loses a loved one. So we say, my sympathies are with you because most of, if not all of us, have experienced loss and grief, the death of a loved one. And so we can say, my sympathies are with you. I know what that feels like. But empathy is where it says, I, I don't know what your feeling feels like. But because you matter to me and because I value you, I want to step into, I want to enter into your experience and see things from your perspective. Not the way that I would interpret it if I was in the situation, but to try to see things through your eyes. Or as Atticus Finch so eloquently put it, to crawl inside your skin and to walk around in it for a while. To see what life is like from your perspective. To me, that is the real demonstration of love. And so each and every day this week, I'm going to issue kind of a love challenge uh, for us to try to follow through with to fulfill this command that Jesus gave us to love our neighbors and ourselves or demonstrate this agape love we talked about yesterday. So the challenge today is this, work on being a good listener. Um, I was told years ago that you always learn more by listening because you were already fully aware of what you were going to say with, you know, to begin with. So today I want you to focus on being a good listener. Um, and, and as you're listening, don't just listen for the content of what someone is saying, but try to hone in on what the emotion is or the feeling is behind the content. Uh, mental health professionals, counselors call this at process active listening, but it's the idea that I am fully engaged with you. My attention is nowhere else and I'm focused on you right now. And before I try to make a judgment about what you're saying, I want to try to consider what you're saying from your perspective. I want to step into your experience and try to understand where you're coming from, see things through your eyes. That is a genuine act of agape love. It's not easy. It takes time. It takes sacrifice. But that's the very essence of what love is. Let me pray for you. Uh, Father God, we come before you this morning, uh, Lord, with the desire to know you more and to, to experience your love. And Lord, as we are experiencing your love and we are filled with your love, Lord, that, that love has nowhere to go but to fill us and to overflow to others. Um, Lord, you even told us in, in the Gospels that out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, Lord, I pray that to not only through our words, but even more importantly, the words that we, um, were, the words that we were, sometimes we use restraint with those words, where we choose to listen first, um, Lord, would be an expression of love to those that you put into our path today. Um, Lord, help us to step into the experience of others, to see things through their perspective, and ultimately, Lord, to always see everyone. Uh, through the eyes of the cross, to view them the way that you view them, Lord. Um, grant us that, that perfect vision that we can see others, um, Lord, through your eyes, from the eyes of heaven. Uh, Lord, we love you. We just pray for your power through your Holy Spirit to work in us and through us today so that we may demonstrate your love in tangible ways uh, to all that we come in contact with. And we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys, and I pray that the love of Christ is seen through each of us uh, all throughout the day. God bless.